Hello everybody, I am Jonathan from NetGear4. The first part of the configuration is the core switch, a layer 3 configuration with troubleshooting. Then there will be a second part with a layer 2 VLAN for the distribution switch. So on the core switch, the primary switch, we create the VLAN control. This is very, very important. It's where you put the control processor, the touchpad, uh, everything about control. Then we create a VLAN video. So it should be a VLAN routing because we want the control processor to give orders to the encoders or decoders. And we will create uh, audio VLAN with the QoS, it's automatic uh, with the profile on M4250. And then we will create the distribution switch with only the two VLANs, VLAN video and VLAN audio, because everything is already on the primary switch, so we don't need the VLAN control. And then we see that with the auto trunk and auto lag, you can reach the core switch very easily. Now I'm connecting to the switch 192.168.0.239. It is the default IP address on the port OOB out of bond. And I'm going to network profile. So in network profile, we have already all the ports in the VLAN management. We are going to reuse this VLAN as a control VLAN. So I'm going to edit this uh, VLAN management. And the first thing that I will do is to edit the VLAN routing because I want to communicate with my VLAN video and audio. So I'm going to use the static uh, IP address 172.0.1.254. I change the subnet for three times 255. And I enable the DHCP server. I you just leave it like that, but otherwise I can custom the DNS or change the, the pool uh, if I want to use the static IP addresses, this kind of stuff. Okay, good. Now I'm going to create the VLAN video. So you have just to select in the profile what is fitting for you. So in my case, it's only video. I don't have AES67 uh, with video. So basically the profile is compatible with all the guys, uh, Questron NVX, uh, IMX, uh, SVSI, uh, uh, all the video and um, encoders and decoders. So my VLAN ID will be the uh, number 10. I choose a color for my two ports that I selected. I want the routing, I want the control process processor to communicate to the VLAN video. So the getaway uh, uh, with uh, 10.254 and I enable the DHCP server. I can customize. I don't do it. It's okay. And uh, the last one, we are going to create the VLAN audio Dante. So I'm a bit of liar because I told you you will see uh, to configure the QoS, but actually when um, you, um, you, you use the profile Dante, the QoS is automatic. So when you set uh, this profile and automatically you get the quality of service. Then I choose the color for my ports. I enabled my uh, routing with my IP for the routing. So 20.254 for this uh, VLAN 20. Three times uh, 255 for my subnet. I enable the DHCP server. I don't customize again. And that's it. I have created my three VLANs with quality of service, DHCP uh, pool and everything. Before to continue on live demo uh, on troubleshooting, I want to explain some points. So first thing, if you put your laptop in the controlled VLAN, then you try to ping the IP address VLAN 10, so the IP address 10.254 you will get a positive answer only if a device is wired in the VLAN 10. If nothing is plugged, then the route won't go up and you will get a negative answer to your ping. As soon as you add a device, whatever is the IP address of the device, you will get a positive answer. Then if you try to ping the device 10.1, if you get a negative answer, it's because of the gateway address set up into the device from your laptop or the encoder. 
you have a wrong gateway. It's for that you cannot ping each other. So let's go on the live demo now. Now I'm connecting to the switch truth. It's IP management from the VLAN one, the control VLAN. So um, 1.254. And then I'm going to access to a NAS from the VLAN 10. So I don't have uh, an encoder. So I'm just uh, putting uh, the IP address at 10.1, which is my NAS, uh, my ready NAS. And I'm going to connect. So I mean, password and uh, connection. Now I'm going to uh, the network tab. I'm going to the settings and I'm going to set a wrong um, gateway uh, IP address. This is really, really the main issue. Uh, sometimes there's no uh, IP uh, set for the gateway. Uh, something to totally wrong, like uh, the firewall uh, IP address. So as you can see, I can ping uh, the, the NAS. So I'm going to launch the ping request. Now I'm going to set a, a wrong uh, gateway uh, address. So 200, there's nothing in 200. Okay, then I come back to the ping and you can see that the ping stopped to answer. So some people would tell me, yeah, but I can't connect to the encoders. Yeah, because you are in the same subnet. So now I'm enabling a second Ethernet card, which is wired on the uh, VLAN 10 in the IGP client mode. So we're just going to wait a bit to enable it. Okay, enabled. And then status. Nothing raised again. Still the paper address. And uh, just a bit of patience. And it's okay. I have my pink uh, positive. Um, I did take an IP address and uh, it's answering to the pink. So, yes, when you are in the same subnet, you can reach it. But your routing is not working because the gateway is not correctly set. To configure the second switch, from the primary switch, I go to neighbor. And then I can identify easily switch to with its own IP address 1.4. Like that, you will avoid to go on the switch, pot out of bounds, you know, find your IP address, this kind of stuff. You can find it straight away from the neighbor tab. So now I'm connected on it and I'm going to the network profile. As said previously, we are going to configure two VLANs, but actually there is a third VLAN, the management VLAN is there, of course because all the ports are on the uh, VLAN management. If you want, you can set a static IP address to reach uh, this uh, switch through its uh, uh, VLAN management IP address. Then I'm going to create the VLAN video. I have selected the two ports. I said VLAN video and very important, the same ID than the primary switch. Okay, this is really important. You can do a mistake on the name, it's okay. But on the ID, you have to put the same ID. Then I save because I don't need the routing. I have already the routing on the primary switch. I don't need the DHCP uh, pool because I have already that on the primary switch. And then I do exactly the same thing uh, for the VLAN Dante. Again, only the ID is really important. Okay, don't mistake the, um, the ID, the VLAN ID, and you say, okay, no need of routing. Everything is configured on the primary switch. And that's it, it is finished. But now you are going to tell me, yeah, but the uplinks you have to configure. No, we have auto trunk. So automatically, the VLANs are going through the trunk port. Now I'm connecting my second NIC card, right, the one that I used to uh, ping my NAS. And I'm going to connect it to connect it on the spot number one. You can see here the blue stuff and uh, I'm going to launch the ping. So laptop, switch number two, trunk port, switch number one, the NAS. Okay. And it's pinging. See, you have nothing uh, to configure. When you have the A for automatic trunk, just work, that's it. So now if you have to add multiple encoders, so you need more bandwidth. So you need to 
aggregate the links to increase the bandwidth between both switches. So you go on link aggregation. Actually, you don't need to, to go on it, but just to show you, you see there is no lag, nothing is configured. Now I'm plugging on the switch a second port. Okay, right now I'm doing it. And then I'm refreshing this. I'm watching just a bit that, um, you know, the blinking of um, the LED. And see, you have the lag automatically created. And because we have two VLANs going through the lag, we have also the auto trunk. You see the lag one as the A for auto and the port of the mention L1 that they are participating. And don't forget that the Pro AV team is there to help you to design and configure. Just you have to reach proavdesign at netgear.com. Thank you.